most haunted town in America. What is up, my beautiful people? Thank you for tuning in to another adventure from yours truly, Backroad Hauntings TV. I sure hope all of you are having a great Halloween's Eve or Halloween's night. I don't know which night I'm going to put this out on, but I'm hoping it's going to be one of those nights that I'll be able to start putting this, the videos from this trip out. Um, earlier this morning, Shelly and I adventure nine hours south to one of the most amazing towns I think I've ever been to. And as we were pulling into this town, I was in such awe about the beauty and the historical fact of this town. You could just see it when you pull in. And I completely forgot to do the intro for this video. So, I'm doing it now. You know why? Because better late than never, that's why. But like I said, Shelly and I adventure nine hours south. And when you pull into this town, it draws you in. It just draws you in, grabs you, holds you, it doesn't want to let you go, or you don't want to let go of it. I don't know what it is. I've been to a lot of beautiful towns before, but there's something about this town. Maybe it's because it's got my favorite Triple H effect, and no, I'm not talking about the damn wrestler. I'm talking about honky tonks, history, and hauntings. I'm a country boy at heart, so I love honky tonks, and I'm a big history buff, so anything that has to do with history, I am down. And anyone who knows me knows that I love a good haunted place. That, my friends, is what I call the Triple H effect. Um, but like I said, we pulled into town. If you guys follow me on social media, Twitter, Instagram, um, even Facebook, though I have not posted anything on Facebook. I don't reply to messages on Facebook anymore because recently the Facebook account has been hacked and I'm tired of Facebook. I just, I'm sick of them arguing with them and whatnot. So if you want to message me, message me on Twitter or Instagram, that would be perfectly fine. But don't message me on Facebook because I don't even go on there anymore. Like I said, Shelly and I, we ventured nine hours south to one of these most beautiful one of the most beautiful towns that I think I've ever been to. And if you guys follow me on social media, you will know where we are at right now because I've talked about it a couple times recently. But for those of you who don't know, Shelly and I decided to take a trip. This is actually a birthday gift from me to her. Um Yes, ladies, when you date me, you don't get jewelry and flowers. No, nope. you get the shit scared out of you. So, anyways, we ventured into this town, what some claim to be one of the most haunted town in America, if not the most haunted town in America, Virginia City, Nevada. Now, when a lot of people come to Virginia City, the first thing they want to do, they want to get the haunted experience. They want to go to the Silver Queen because that's known as probably one of the most haunted hotels in the West. Um, but they want to go to the Silver Queen. They want to stay there at the Silver Queen Hotel. That's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to do a little bit different. We were going to be here for two nights, three days. So we decided that... Uh, we would stay one night at one hotel, one hotel that's claimed to be haunted, and another night at another hotel that's claimed to be haunted. And I didn't want to do the Silver Queen. I wanted to do one that maybe quite a few know about, and then one that not too many know about. And so the first one we're going to stay at tonight, which is going to be this video, um, is going to be the famously haunted Gold Hill Hotel. And then tomorrow night, we're going to be staying at another place, another hotel, motel, that not too many of you probably know about, but we are going to be staying in the haunted doll room at the Sugarloaf Mountain Motel. Everybody I've talked to here says that one is really haunted. I don't know. We'll find out. So, but anyways, guys, smash that like button. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button and share the video. Comment down below what you think of it. If you guys hear something, see something, say something down below. Let me know. 
with that being said guys enjoy the video much love and respect and happy Halloween we made it to the gold hill only took us nine hours <laughs> but we're here let's go check it out we haven't even seen our room yet Established in 1859, the recent house known today as the Gold Hill Hotel is the oldest hotel in the state of Nevada, even being established shortly before Nevada's creation as a territory on March 2, 1861. The building has served as many things over the years, including a private residence, a bar, and a brothel. Having seen its fair share of tragedies, the Gold Hill Hotel is one of the few remaining buildings left from the mining boom of the 1860s and 70s. We are staying in room number four, Rosie's room, in the original part of the hotel. Some believe that Rosie haunts room number four. It is said that Rosie may have been a lady of the night, maybe still lingering around to keep others company who choose to stay in her room. Oh. Let's no, see no, the no. Oh, it's got food and water right there. Okay. Oh, what is this? Oh, what is this? Yeah. All snacks cost a dollar. There is a vending machine for beverages outside main lobby door. Ah, cool. And here oh, is the original oh. hallway. Okay. How cool ice. Oh, it's, it's all individually bagged. Sweet. Here is the, uh, Rosie did it. <laughs> we are staying in Rosie's room. Oh yeah, look at the door. Yep. Wow. Yeah, it does kind of feel like you're in a fun house. Yeah, because the floor is not level. It's not. Yeah. All right, here we go. Yeah, the floor is not level. It feels like you're walking in a fun house but here is the room number four Rosie's room okay oh look babe the Wi-Fi username the password check in 3 p.m. check out is 11 tomorrow morning Rosie my name is John this is Shelly Hi, Rosie. I hope you're okay with us entering your room. We are, we will be as respectful as we possibly can. We are not meaning any harm towards you. And the cool thing is, it's got air condition. Does it? I didn't even notice. Oh, and a heater. It's got both. Air condition. I sleep with air condition on every night, well, even during the winter time. A tiny room. Rosie, I hope you don't mind us <laughs> interacting with you tonight. Honey, look at the cat. Look out the window. Look at the cat. The cat's on the roof. So most of the most of the claims in this room, one, uh, most people smell a rose, a rose perfume smell. Um, two, I've seen video of uh, a shadow being casted right here in front of the canopy. Um, also seen. Uh, some EVPs. I also read that a couple had stayed in this room and the guy didn't believe it was haunted, but the girl was kind of, well, she wanted to believe, but they really didn't come stay here for the experience. But the guy had brought one of his dad's old leather bags and when he brought it in here, I guess he sat it down and when he sat it down, he had heard a woman whisper in his ear, who brought the bag? 
And after that, that was it. He was like, okay, all right, I'm done. I don't know if he ended up leaving or not, but this was built in, this is the oldest part of the hotel. And this was built in, what was it, 1859 is when this was built. And though, you know, you could tell, it's, you could tell it's old because everything's off center, nothing's level. But I love the old nostalgic look. I like how they kept it. It's Rosie's room. Next door is room number five. That's William's room. He was a miner that died in the yellow, jack, yellow jacket mine fire. Here comes the cat. I know because it saw me. Yeah. This wasn't locked. That's right. We could lock it. But hopefully. Oh, he's a cute cat. Oh, he's a cute little kitty cat. Hey, I'm kitty. I'm it's the Gold Hill cat because it's, it's got a food gold in cat the room. at the Gold Hill Hotel. Aww. Aww. Don't mail. You're making me feel bad. I saw the vending machine does. She right over there. Yeah, I see him. This is cool. Yeah. This is the great room, right? Remember they said they had a great room? Yeah. Yeah. This is cool. Is that what this is, the great room? Yeah. Yeah, we could have. 1859. Says, please do not re remove books from hotel owner's personal collection. Hmm. That's cool. That's a pencil drawing. That's pretty cool. Yeah, the owner is a Buffalo Bills fan. Go Cowboys. Antique organ. This is really oh, there's nice. The but yeah. Wow. Oh yeah. So That's this cool. Is the art. This talks about it. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Look at all the deer. They're all crossing the road. Let's see how close we could get to them. Here comes the cat. And the cat is on the hunt. Oh. There they go, right across the road. This one's behind. Yep. There goes. And. Well, you better catch up with the rest of them. You're just a baby. Most haunted town in America. Truth is, it doesn't matter if it is or not. This town's absolutely beautiful. It's awesome. It's got so much history here. Just the history alone is worth coming. So far, everybody's been really, really cool with us. Really nice. Laid back. Gold Hill Hotel and Bar. Definitely a plus. And for all of you worried about the cat being on the roof, well, here's the roof. <laughs> and oh, it's called Miss Kitty. There's its bed. Okay, you're Miss His Kitty. His bed is That's right in the loft. Miss Kitty. 
Kitty. So, Miss Kitty, that's your name. Oh, yeah, Miss Kitty, that's a good kitty. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. What's a good kitty? What's a good kitty? Yeah, it's a good kitty. She's trying to make you. <laughs> that's too funny. As nightfall approaches, we decided to reach out to whatever may be haunting room 4 at the Gold Hill Hotel. As I was getting some equipment set up, something strange occurred. I was getting ready to set up a REM pod in the bathroom when all of a sudden Shelly looks at the camera with a blank stare and says something. The strange thing is, though you can't make out what she's saying, it doesn't appear to have any rhyme or reason, and she doesn't have any recollection of even doing this. Now, this might not seem so strange until later in the night when we are sleeping, something happens to me. But before we decide to go to bed, while we were trying to make contact with whatever entities that might still be looming in and around the Gold Hill Hotel, we believe we might have had some interaction with Rosie herself. Whoever did that, can you turn that on again? The flashlight closest to me just came on. I'm trying to see if it was just a coincidence or what. But, um, whoever just turned on the flashlight, if that was, if that was, if it really was someone that turned on the flashlight, do me a favor. Turn on this flashlight, the one you just turned on. Turn it on again. Try to do the same thing you did just a second ago. And if you could do that, then I know you're here. There you go. There you go. Can you turn it on just a little bit harder just to see if we could get it to stay? Good job. That was awesome. I don't know if anybody's ever tried the flashlight thing with you. Let's try this. So, for the light that's closest to me, that will be yes. Okay? And the light that's farthest away, that would be for the answer no. And I will ask you questions that are yes and no. Okay? Do you understand? Do you understand? Turn on the one closest to me for yes. If you need some energy, use some energy. Use it from the batteries that we have around here. But if you understand what I'm saying, you understand that. There you go. That was brighter that time. Yeah, that was a lot brighter. That was great. Okay. Is this Rosie that we're talking to? Is this Rosie? Rosie, is this you? If it is, go ahead and turn on the flashlight closest to me. If it's not, turn on the flashlight farthest away. Rosie, it is you. Very good, Rosie. Thank you. That is very good. Though we may very well be interacting with Rosie, or something portraying to be Rosie, 
There is no way I can say this is concrete evidence of paranormal activity. We use many tools to investigate the paranormal. Using flashlights to interact with the other side is just a piece to the whole puzzle we are trying to put together. After our brief interaction using the flashlights, we decided it was time to get some sleep. The following is what occurred throughout most of the night. As I was reviewing the evidence and came across this clip, my first thought was that I had said something in my sleep because you can clearly see my cheek twitch a couple times like I was experiencing some kind of facial muscle spasms. But when I slowed it down, I was shocked at the fact that I was not moving anymore when you can clearly hear what sounds like a male's voice whispering the words, I miss him. Here it is again at regular speed and then I slowed it down to 25% so you can see that the voice appears right after I stop moving. <laughs> For all the skeptics out there, let me inform you that, no, I am not a ventriloquist, so the possibility of me throwing my voice would be absolutely impossible, especially when you can clearly see that I am dead, asleep, no pun intended. A short time later, shortly before 3 a.m., our camera stopped recording. I woke up just a little after 3 and checked my phone and saw it was exactly 3.09. I then walked over to the camera and saw it was no longer on. I turned the camera back on only to see it still had a full battery. When reviewing this evidence, I saw the camera had shut off between 2.50 and 2.55 a.m. based off of how long it had been recording from the time we went to sleep. If the camera had shut off due to a dead battery, then there was no way it would be fully charged just less than 20 minutes later. through the night at Gold Hill. Um, believe it or not, uh, we ended up sleeping through the night. And it was probably, probably the best sleep I think me and her have gotten in a long time. Um, I don't know, maybe we're just comfortable sleeping in a haunted hotel. There was one point in time that I did wake up at exactly 3.09 in the morning and our camera that we had recording on us had shut off and I don't know what the deal was we still got to look through all the evidence and then when I woke up this morning 
the voice recorder we had going had shut off too. The batteries were not dead. The camcorder was still plugged into the charger. It should have been on all night, but um, I'll look over all that evidence and see what goes on. But we made it through the night. Other than that, well, on to the next one, Virginia City, day two.